Hi everyone, May 13, 2019, I'm going to be showing you what our man-made weather brought to an awful lot of communities. We'll start with Florida. Seeing uh, a lot of debris and take a look at this tree here. You can see this actual trunk actually looks like it was just split right in half. And then take a look at this. This tree was just up. Trees are toppling over everywhere, but look how thin the roots are on this tree. Rooted. You can see how high these roots come. They're above my hip, I'd say, almost to my head, actually. And then I want to show you the real damage. This tree that was uprooted, you can see it actually crashed into this apartment up on the second floor here. Take a look. It crashed through the window up on the second floor. Now, we did talk to the neighbors who live beneath this first, uh, who live on the first floor, actually. You can actually hear those branches cracking still from this rain going on right now. But we talked to the man who lives down here on the first floor. He says it was sunny, and then all of a sudden, it started raining, and he heard a large crack. And all of a sudden, it started raining. All of a sudden. I want to show you what I captured earlier today. Just talking about rain and our grass being watered, now we're uh, looking at a flood advisory here. Yeah, uh, right across the metro area and points off to the west. This is no surprise. We've been talking all morning and now all noon about it. There's kind of the graphic, including Claremont and Lake County, all the way over to downtown Orlando. It ends just north of the Walt Disney Complex. But basically, think of this area as where we expect to see training rains or training rains now that's another term i've never heard before and it's being said almost on a daily basis now training rains this is the area that that guy is talking about and look at all of the high frequency heating that is taking place in this exact same area that this meteorologist, well, he's giving you what's going on, the forecast. For rains that could start piling up and flooding low-lying areas and things like that. This is brand new into the Weather Center. It runs until 2.30 this afternoon. About a half million people under this flood advisory. And I would expect more of those to be posted. Our first alert live Doppler radar showing Interstate 4 littered with very heavy rain frequent lightning and at times some pretty good gusty winds. I'm happy to say I've not seen any reports of hail in the last few minutes time or anything like that. So this is turning into more of what we call a stratiform rain event or just a bunch of rain falling over areas of time. So flooding is a big concern. Scott's more right on the Volusia Brevard County border about to knock up here into uh, Oak Hill and Edgewater. Titusville it's pouring down from about Disney World through Kissimmee in the tourist district. If it's not raining over you now just give it a little bit of time more rains from Polk County will be knocking on your doorstep and I do want to point out down here in Brevard County we're watching some showers right along 192 near the mall there this is going to continue as a matter of fact I think Brevard County has the best chance to see some stronger storms later this afternoon heaviest stuff in Volusia County is in extreme southern Volusia it's just good steady heavy rains from Ormond Beach and Tomoka Farms all the way down uh, I-4 into West Volusia, though it looks like Deltona, you're about to see a bit of a break. I want to show you, though, there's a lot more where that came from. This is all the same energy source that's moving through our area. And until this boundary drops to the south, we're going to keep moisture with us. So where could we be talking about the strongest storms? Look at the map, okay? Heat is energy. That's what helps the storms to blow up. It's a nice and Heat. comfortable 70 degree. Heat is energy and that's what helps the storms blow up high frequency heating and that is uh, the circular very defined circular patterns here that's the high frequency heating taking place from Doppler radar stations oh my god um, you know, I'm moving it along like I didn't film it like it's actually heaviest stuff. Of it's not actually happening, okay? And you see all of the intersecting 
Hawk Nyx Red Rings. And there are so many in this. Um, I think I counted about six just in this storm alone. So, look. It's very obvious that we have our weather being created by man. And I don't know what was happening, but there was a huge pulse, which let me show you. See? I never experienced that before on this site. So you have the high frequency heating taking place throughout this entire storm. I have to do this, guys. I have to do it. Doppler radar. This is the high frequency heating. Glenn Towers. When you listen to meteorologists or you read these articles on weather sites, they talk a lot about these storms that seem to travel on interstates. Look, when you're driving on an interstate, look for this structure. And I bet that you will see Gwen Towers, different from cell towers, Gwen Towers. These huge antennas, very, very high, much higher than a cell tower, with these wires coming down to the ground. See the wires going down to the ground? These are Gwen Towers. They can use Gwen Towers to manipulate, to steer, to intensify weather fronts. And it's, well, the Ground Wave Emergency Network was decommissioned in the late 70s, I think. Well, if it was decommissioned, why do we see Gwen Towers proliferating across the country? Because they use these towers to manipulate, modify, intensify, steer weather fronts. They also can use these extremely low frequencies because that's what the Gwen Tower emits into the atmosphere or going down to the ground. They can emit extremely low frequencies through the ground. That's why you see all these wires going down to the ground. But they can also emit it, emit these extremely low frequencies into the atmosphere. So very dangerous are these structures. They can also use the extremely low frequencies to make you feel like shit, emotionally, physically, mentally, uh, they can use them for mind control. No joke. So I have to do this. Weather modification by artificial satellite. This is a patent. Just one of, well, countless patents on weather modification. And well, before I go on, let me just read this quote. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Yes, Martin Luther King Jr. Very short sentence filled with meaning, profound meaning. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. So, Weather modification by artificial satellite. They can, with this method of modifying the weather, cause rapid heating of another air mass. Wow. So when you listen to the meteorologists, these freak storms that we're having, oh, we had a cool air mass hit a warm air mass. They can heat air masses. They can cause precipitation with this method. They can modify the jet stream path and therefore modify the weather. They can increase the humidity. 
They can create tornadoes. They can increase the tornado strength. Uh, these are coming from these satellites and well, they can the, the satellite engines are equipped with large capacity energy storage devices. Energy collected and stored during daytime can be discharged during nighttime. Uh, this is technology that is very hard to understand, but I will link below to the patent and you can read it. Microwave heating of cold, rainy downdrafts. Tornado mitigation that can influence the wind speed and direction. This heating method can quickly supply temperature rises in the air. Air heating. Air heating to generate atmospheric wave phenomena, locally changing the electrical con conductivity of the air in specific regions of a weather weather pattern manipulate the weather pattern they could prevent tornadoes so why don't they do it yes they can modify local weather they can well give you your special desired weather upon request we have commercial weather modification companies that do that so what can they do? They can, with this, with these satellites, they can modify cooling, warming, or precipitations of selected regions of Earth. They can modify the local and or global weather patterns. It's, um, you know, every time I see climate change being, you know, that's the explanation for all of these weather events. It's maddening what we are living. They don't need to dispense chemicals. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is to show people that no, there is not one method. Please understand. You now I get comments from people who say you know, they're modifying the weather by the um, Weather War 101 he pointing out that there were a lot of these um, cooling plants. Oh God, I can't rem rem remember the name of them, but they emit, you can see smokestacks that emit tremendous amounts of water vapor. Well, that's one of the methods. Only one, though. There are other ways to create cloud. There are other ways to modify the weather. There are many methods. And I'm sure there are methods that we don't even know about. But no dispensing of chemicals are needed. The satellite weather modification system is a local as well as global weather modification tool. Uh, they can simultaneously bring rain to dry regions in Southern California and drought regions in southern Ethiopia. Most remarkable of all is that these and many other tasks can all be accomplished by switching between some computer codes. And voila! Stroke a key on a, on a keyboard and you got rain. Create high humidity air masses or to form clouds. You can increase the moisture content of the air mass. In high humidity, air rises to high altitudes. It begins to cool and form clouds. Warm a local region. And we have weather modification by carbon dust absorption of solar energy. So when you see all of that black crap in your sky, well, a lot of people argue it's coal ash it could be both. It could be one or the other. 
Carbon Dust, you read these papers by William Gray, uh, Department of Atmospheric Science, Colorado State University. And there are, I think, about four different papers talking about carbon dust, black carbon dust, how cheap it is, how easy it is to dispense, and how wonderful it is in intensifying the heat of the atmosphere. Artificial heat source. Also uh, lends itself to the production of extra cumulus convection and this extra cumulus heating is likely to feed back to the mesosystem and keep it going or intensify it. Uh, maintenance and growth can occur after the original heat has been dissipated and you can look at these papers and look at the fabulous you know uh, graphs that they have and wow they can induce temperature changes radiation induced very quickly and that itself can create weather atmospheric heating Another one, an air heating system could be relatively small. Small systems could be used to generate acoustic waves that could be absorbed in the tight steering wind patterns of a mesocyclone, modifying the direction of the path of the jet stream. The heating time periods for generation of gravity waves could be range, could be arranged from hours to days or weeks. Yeah, there's an awful lot that they can do. Hurricane mitigation, but they don't do that. Uh, and there's a reason why, which I'll get to in a moment, but <clears throat> acoustic waves, well, uh, sonic waves, extremely low frequencies, acoustic waves, uh, important in influencing weather systems. Acoustic energy associated with mesocyclones indicates a strong correlation with tornadic activity. Acoustic waves can be generated by the air heating plasma pattern by oscillating the heating beam at an appropriate acoustic frequency. Ground or satellite based microwave phased arrays focused on specific locations in the atmosphere will be used to heat the atmosphere and create useful artificial ionized plasma patterns. Weather modification of tornadoes and of the jet stream influencing hurricanes and typhoons by influencing the position of the jet stream and the behavior of atmospheric gravitation waves is also discussed. So Agenda 21 Agenda 21 was like the broad outline of changing the world. Agenda 2030 are more of the details on how those changes would be brought about. United Nations International Building Codes Necessary Tool for Agenda 21 Implementation. This is an excerpt from the preamble of the document Agenda 21 on the United Nations website. Land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. What does that mean? Private property is going away. Land cannot be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals. We need to control it. Government needs to control it. So when they're destroying a lot of properties, what does FEMA do? And this is what you're going to see with this flooding in so many different areas. You're going to see the FEMA representatives come in. Now, they may not disclose themselves as representatives. 
they may disclose themselves as, well, you know, I just want to help out in this area and I just want to give you the information, which is FEMA will buy your homes through their buyout program. And it's probably a good thing that you do it because, well, now your home is sitting in an area that has been hit with repeated flooding, which depreciates the value of your home. And since you have had repeated flooding, you just don't want to deal with it again. And climate change, well, it's going to happen again. So why don't you sell your property to FEMA for pennies on the dollar? That is what has been happening for a very long time. FEMA, their buyout programs, this is Missouri's, but they have them for every state. Successful stories from the Missouri buyout program. Okay, I posted this video, I don't know, months ago. All of the flash flooding that was occurring uh, might have been, well here, January 3rd. All right, so this came about after the hurricanes and also flash flooding in other areas. This is North Carolina. Buyout workshop for Florence victims. They hold workshops and they try to get you to sell your property because you don't want to go through another flood. You can't afford it. Nobody's going to buy it. Sell it to FEMA. And if you read these articles, you will come across, and that's a little bit too small for me to read, but look at all of these areas. Chatham, oh, Vermont, here, uh, gets federal okay to buy flood-prone homes. 135 property buyouts. Yay. Okay. Well, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has given final approval to a Vermont plan to continue buying out homes and other properties that are prone to flood damage so structures can be destroyed and the land opened up to allow future floodwaters to rise without causing any damage. The buyout has conditions. They buy out whole towns. The condition? No structures will be built on the property. All structures that they buy will be torn down and it will be turned into green areas for wildlife. Or maybe a park that you could enjoy, but no structures. Fair Bluff, North Carolina. Um, when you read these I hear 152 properties, including the 34. So, got about 190 properties with another 15 homes, another 25. Purchase the properties, which would then be signed over to the local government, but with deed restrictions that prohibit anything from ever again being built on that property. This is how they're getting people out of these areas with nothing to be built again. So remember the mega regions and people uh, calling me crazy and you crazy getting all of these people out of the gray areas like it's uh, well yeah, when you're just like an ordinary uh, individual and you would never even conceive of anything like this. Well, the United Nations has. The gray area, no human habitation. They are moving everybody into mega regions. And this is one of the ways in which they're doing it flood them out, flood them again and again, and eventually people say, okay, buy it. I can't do this anymore. How often have you heard 
people saying, I, I, I can't do this anymore. And I posted videos on people saying just that, I'm done. I'm moving, I can't do it. So the amount of properties that were purchased after the hurricanes last year, uh, it's really phenomenal. Um, there's a lot of talk of FEMA buyout here in this development and we would definitely want that to happen because nobody wants to live in this development right now because of the repeated flooding. We're seeing it again right now. Guarantee you we will be seeing FEMA going into these areas to buy up the property. Here FEMA program offers flooded Denham Springs the, that was the Baton Rouge flood, right? We didn't hear about all of the small towns. We just heard Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge. Denham Springs, right outside Baton Rouge, got flooded out. FEMA, either elevate your home or sell it. Restrictions, you know, the noose around our neck is going to get tighter and tighter but they're not doing it to every American at the exact same time. So you don't know how tight the noose is, but the people in Denham Springs do. They know. Buy out up to 100 homes. Iowa. My flood insurance is costing me more per month than my loan for the house. Uh, we can't afford the insurance anymore. We're tired of dealing with the flooding issue. Every time we have a major rain issue. We don't know if we have to start moving our stuff into the attic. Let FEMA buy it. Okay, well, there were a lot of areas here. This is one flood consultant who came in to, I think, one of the uh, coastal towns, North Carolina. And this is one of your, well, Either they disclose that they're actually representing FEMA, or they don't. But the whole point is sell. And what do they say? It, this guy was saying, it's climate change. You know, you're going to be flooded again. North Carolina, Kentucky, Iowa, um, South Carolina. It's, uh, yeah, all over. FEMA going into these areas after they're flooded, buying them out, pennies on a dollar. It's very sad. But, you know, oh, and those who believe that Trump stopped the Paris Climate Agreement, it has not stopped. It is still being enforced by mayors, by governors, um, South Carolina mayors who signed the Paris Climate Agreement working to address climate change. Yeah. So, um, FEMA for communities plagued by repeated flooding, property acquisition may be the answer. FEMA removes humans in gray area turns it green for wildlife. Maurice Strong, who many liken him to be like the father of Agenda 21. This is a quote. Current lifestyles and consumption patterns of the affluent middle class involving high meat intake, consumption of large amounts of frozen and convenient convenience foods, ownership of motor vehicles, golf courses, small electric appliances, home and workplace air conditioning, and suburban housing are not sustainable. Isn't the only hope for the planet that the industrialized civilizations collapse? Isn't it our responsibility to bring this about? Well, surely they did believe it was their responsibility. And how are they doing it? Well, 
Saw significant damage with trees down, some crashing into buildings, as you can see there, and houses. Uh, the mayor believes Where are the roots to this tree? There's no. Oh, see all of the fungal disease? Okay. This is a very diseased tree. Disease because of the chemicals, the heavy metals being sprayed, coming down into the soil, and they are killing the roots of the trees. That's why you see all of these um, trees collapsing everywhere, causing a lot of damage, power outages, hitting homes, killing people in, in cars. And, well, they're calling a whole lot of the trees coming down tornadoes, EF zeros, or you hear them say, well, we're not sure, straight lined winds or uh, microbursts, or was it or tornado? Well, they can create wind. And they call it a tornado because there's got to be an explanation for these trees just, whoa, uprooting themselves. Where was this? Um, I believe this was in Mississippi. These small, small tornado, tornado touched down. down. There, was there was also some flooding and rain. rain. The, the system, system brought as much as, much as six, six inches of rain in some areas. Six inches of rain in some areas. Some areas. People this is not climate change. This is not global warming. This is man causing weather, Doppler radar, Gwen Towers, satellites, South Carolina. Republic Complex flooded water up to people's chest. chest. Some, Some were forced to swim through the parking lot to get to, get to safety. safety. There's, There's so, so much water, cars even lifted off the ground. ground. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. I'm Liz Foster. Dalton Bridge Apartments in Lancaster are still trying to figure out just how bad the flooding was overnight. At least 30 units now need major repairs. Eyewitness News reporter Stephanie Tinoco went inside some of these apartments and shows us some of the damage. We've been, We've been out here, here for hours, hours and we walked, walked to several, several units. units. They, they look very, very much like this. Mud, mud is everywhere. There's even, even water marks. You can tell how high the water was inside the apartment. The apartment. Many, Many people even told us that they've had to throw away a lot of, of their furniture. furniture. And, and while they've, they've experienced flooding in the past, nothing has caused quite this type of damage. All of this was covered up the water. Water was already up to here. Once, Once I started, started walking, walking water, water down up to my, to my chest. chest. Monica Hall's unit is one of dozens at the Dalton Bridge Apartments in Lancaster. Lancaster. Flooded during Saturday's storm. It was raining so much that it started to overflow and it just started coming and rushing through our back doors. Tenants shared these pictures of what it looked like as water invaded their safe space last night. It was very shocking. Dozens of cars were damaged too. All the lights were coming on and going off and blinking. It's just ruined. This, this video, video gives you an idea of just how bad, bad it was. Paul told, told me she called her mom for help and then swam across multiple parking lots to meet her at the front entrance. I saw snakes, all type of debris. I didn't know if something was going to attack me. I, I was just like in survival mode for my life. When I got here, it was flooded and my door was swimming through all kind of debris. All afternoon, people have been cleaning up or throwing stuff out destroyed by the flood. Paul says it was so powerful, she believes her car is total. My car began to shift. It's not even in the, in the lines anymore. And when I left, water was already up here to my car. Um, and as you can see the inside, muddy. Now she fears what it will look like once the rain returns. Our homes, um, our cars will be filled with water once again tonight. Management says that they're still assessing every single unit and they've got experts working on this, but they can't say how long this will actually take. They told us that residents have the option to stay here because the upstairs of each unit was not affected. In Lancaster, Steph I don't know about staying there because the mold seems to be 
uh, growing rather quickly these days. Hail storms hammer North Carolina smash car windows. Wow. Raleigh, early Monday afternoon hammering the area with hailstones as large as tennis balls. Walmart in Garner closed. The hail broke the windows of their skylights. Major cleanup to do employee cars also got damaged. Storms erupted along the boundary between cool air to the north and warm air to the south. Remember, they can heat up air masses and they can steer the jet stream. So Florida, um, th th this is the hail that took place in Raleigh. And then you read, you know, just the headlines of these um, articles. It's like toxic smoke hangs over Mexico City as wildfires burn. Okay, wildfires in Mexico City? Well, no, it's in Mexico. Ten acres. That was what I found when I searched these fires. Um, when will the cold ease in the Midwestern, Northeastern United States? 40 degrees in the Berkshires, Massachusetts. Uh, snow also. Italy. Okay, the number of countries, and I'm sure I'm missing some, Guatemala, Paraguay, Iran, India, Greece, Italy, Australia, Mozambique. Uh, just in the last like month, massive flooding. Western Massachusetts. Many, Many drivers, drivers who hit, hit the roads today, today were, were surprised to see snow, snow in Blanford, adding stress to one of the busiest traffic days of the year. Of the, the heaviest of traffic began Sunday afternoon and continued into the early evening, which is why drivers were encouraged to plan ahead on this Mother's Day weekend. And snowfall in the western hills of the Berkshires on Sunday caused quite a bit of problems along the Mass Pike. The whole parking lot area was very busy, filled with cars. Everyone was getting kind of mad at the slowness, and it was just really busy. The wintry, the wintry mix of rain, sleet, and snow, snow caused several, several accidents on the Mass Pike. And, and to ensure safety, the speed limit on the Mass Pike had been reduced to 30 miles per hour from the New York border to mile marker 44 in West Springfield. Ow. Now, I used to live there, and the Pike was just a, um, a torturous, boring uh, drive to have to do 30 miles per hour <laughs> you wouldn't see me on it snow in massachusetts oh snow in michigan okay uh i looked at this kind of snow in michigan and i need it confirmed um <clears throat> this is pretty intense snow in michigan well not only michigan not only massachusetts new york the catskills the Catskills. And guess what? They're calling for more snow coming to you. Um, up north. <sighs> Dallas Fort Worth area. A flood, a flood of frustration, frustration tonight, tonight for a North, North Texas, Texas family after cleaning up water, water damage from, from storms earlier last, last week. week. They are back to square one tonight. tonight. Our Aaron Jones reports from that area just outside of Kaufman, where that, that family says, says they feel like they are simply out of options. Oh She's wading through hip deep water, documenting the devastation for her daughter while her husband holds a gun to protect them from snakes. 
Everything that's not, not tied, tied down is floating. In one week, Shannon Hall's property has seen two rounds, rounds of rain. The first, the first came Thursday. Thursday. She, she says it brought about an inch of water into her home. But by Friday, a lot of it had dried out. Shannon and her family left for a Mother's Day cruise, her parents watching over the house. We had high hopes if it just didn't rain anymore, they could keep it. But Saturday, more rain came for hours. And now they say this home is unlivable. We've worked so hard to build it themselves. We're a resident, and the daughter has a gym in there that's 50 by 50. And all these other children that come here to, to tumble, they cannot be in this mess. The family believes all this water is backing up from a watershed behind the property. It can't accommodate all the water that's coming in. They say they've asked the city and county for help, but for now, are going at this alone. Somebody's responsible for that land. Somebody's responsible for the drainage of it. In Kaufman County, Aaron... Good luck, because I am seeing more and more cities not doing anything. Insurance companies denying claims for floods. FEMA, well, we'll buy your property. Uh, or you can take a loan out. The Small Business Administration will give you a low interest loan to repair your property. Um, it's And look at this. This is um, Detroit area. Of the trash trouble, some are dealing with Down River. It's been nearly two weeks since flooding devastated a number of communities, but the frustration is far from over. Garbage is still lining the streets of this Allen Park neighborhood, so we sent 7 Action News reporter Brian Abel to check it out and get them some answers about what's going on. For every, for every pile, pile of this. Well, this, well, this was, was my report at this time, time last week. week. A week ago today. today. No, no, you're, you're not, not seeing deja, deja vu. vu. None, None of this has been, has been picked up yet by the city. city. After I cleaned up my basement, the city building pipe's not picking it up. I don't, I don't know why. why. As, the As the same piles of trash remain some, some 12 days after flooding created, created the damage, the frustrations of people on Allen Park just as high as the waters once were. Uh, makes, makes it look, look like we, we live, live in a slum or something. Or something you know? Know? On Facebook and Allen Park's website, this message, that, that cleanup is expected, expected to be done by this Saturday and a request for patience. I don't know. I hope they do get it picked up Saturday, you know. I mean, it would be nice. Um, so we can start moving on with our lives, you know. The city again declining an interview request, saying they're just too busy. And Michigan State Police doing a damage assessment tour of the area today. They will use that information, send it to FEMA for a possible emergency declaration, but no time frame on when that could possibly happen. And I can't believe that you know, emergency de declarations have not been approved considering the damage that we have seen in videos. The tremendous amount of rainfall over the last several weeks has a number of communities in Warren County underwater. Blocked off roads and flooded homes are just some of the damage. I walked in about 10, 10 steps as I was almost over my boots. Emergency, emergency management officials say the backwater flooding is the worst they've seen, seen in the county in decades, but fortunately they haven't had to rescue many people. It was an uh, older uh, gentleman that needed help getting out of his house. We had, we had a, a, uh, a water rescue, rescue when this thing first started up in Eagle Lake. The guy went off with the water. The water is so high that some people have to use boats to get to and from their homes. Emergency management officials say that it's going to take years to recover from all of this damage. Some people don't have homes to return to because of the flood water. When you have the chance to move, move. Uh, material positions can be, be in place. Your life cannot. Crews are working to help some people in Eagle Lake move. Uh, this woman's house that is flooded down, and we're moving her stuff to stores in Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, county leaders say there's not much they can do about the flood water. You can't move that kind of water. Uh, there's no pump out there that's big enough. And once that river drops out, the steel bayou gates open again, then we can start getting that backwater out of there. In Warren County, Shalika Powell, 16 WAPT News. We are talking massive amounts of flooding. This is in Mississippi, but we've had Michigan, uh, Iowa, Illinois, South Dakota, 
Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas. It's, well, they're just getting impatient and they're ramping it all up now. They want people out. And that's why now we're hearing, oh, I wasn't flooded last year. I was flooded last week. Got the water out and now I'm flooded again a week later. Mississippi and Alabama are still dealing with last night's flash flooding and storms. David Daniel reports. Water, Water rescues and road, road closures. closures. For, For days, days heavy, heavy rain, rain has pounded, pounded the southeast, southeast leaving, leaving residents in search of higher ground as floodwaters engulf, engulf their homes. We've already, We've already had 18, 18 houses, houses underwater. You know, you know they had, had so much water in them a foot or above. So we're, so we're really, really, really upset. Some, some parts of Louisiana, Louisiana saw several inches of rain fall overnight, overnight leaving some roads impassable. Mississippians saw a similar sight. Flooded roads left people stranded in Biloxi. Residents called loved ones as they loaded into rescue boats on Sunday. First responders carried stranded residents and their pets to nearby shelters. Strong storms rocked Dauphin Island off the Alabama coast. Homeowners and vacationers surveyed the damage Sunday afternoon after fierce winds sent trees into homes and scattered debris across the island. And then, and then our, our house starts shaking, shaking like, we like we were in a boat, and, and they're shaking and rocking back and, back and forth. forth. The Gulf, the Gulf will, will get a break from rain soon, forecast show, but some residents worry any more rain, rain could slow the recovery. Can you can't get through the one before you start another, another one? I'm, I'm Dave. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. Victims in Stevenson County could receive loans for disaster recovery. The U.S. Small Business Administration approved funds for homeowners and businesses impacted by March flooding. The SBA disaster declaration makes long-term, low-interest loans available to homeowners, renters, and businesses. Applications for help with property damage are due by July 8th. There you go. That's, that's what you have. Hey, we'll give you a loan. You don't want to have to take out a loan. You don't want any more debt. But that's what you're left with to repair your homes. So the forecast for the Northeast, more snow, snow in Maine, snow, uh, I think more in Massachusetts, cold front to bring spring snow to Northeast United States by Tuesday. They can create the cold front. This, uh, please guys, Michigan, all right, this was posted yesterday, Michigan flooding. Uh, really? So, did you see that kind of flooding in Michigan, you guys? It's really unbelievable. Now, this, I believe, is a broadcast of uh, news from India, English India. Damage, Damage from, the from the March rains, rains in, the in the Midwest is visible across, across the landscape north of Omaha City. City. Waterlogged Water areas have made several, several neighborhoods, neighborhoods uninhabitable. Though cows, cows are visible in some pastures, pastures many, many breeders are still tallying their, their losses. We had, we had very little time, time to make any preparations because the water just rushed in and, and it covered all of this land, land here, here that we're standing on. on. And it, and it was about four, four maybe, maybe six feet, feet deep in here. here. The floods came as farm incomes have fallen about 50 percent, leading to debt levels not seen since the 1980s. Damages are estimated at more than 800 million dollars. 
Uh, you know, we basically get one paycheck a year, and we may not get that this year, and that's that's scary. Uh, I, I've never been, I've never experienced that before. The situation has also been exacerbated by the U.S.-China trade war, which has closed off a consumer market for some growers. China buys a lot of our commodities from us. They buy soybeans. They buy corn. That's what they get from us. So consequently, it was our products that are that are most, most affected by our trade war. In the wake of the disaster, growers have been granted extensions on credit payments and loans. They hope things will improve next season. Okay. Are you getting the big picture here? Are you getting the big picture? How many people are really suffering in our country? And how we really need to come together and help one another. So it's very interesting how mainstream media and the Daily Beast is mainstream media. Um, it's a mainstream media publication, Agenda 21, the UN conspiracy that just won't die. It won't die. And then when you go through and read these articles, you know, they inevitably claim it's the right-wing conspiracists, Fox News, Tea Party Movement, Fringe, conspiracists, soapboxer, a uh, soapbox to scare, to scare people, they cash in on people's fears, conspiratorial talk, uh, it's uh, anti-Semitic, it's neo-Nazi groups which have jumped on the anti-Agenda 21 bandwagon. So now, what mainstream media is doing is they're not denying that there's an Agenda 21. Now they're saying, oh, it's just every time the United Nations comes out with a plan to help the environment, to help the poor, the conspiracy theorists jump on it and make it into something evil. It is evil. All you have to do is look into it. It's Jews conspiring to harm non-Jews. It's the anti-Semitic crowd. It's any time you get some sort of UN program that suggests any kind of change in the way people live, even if it seems outwardly benign and even voluntary. Yeah, they're claiming this is voluntary. Uh -uh. It's not. It's going to be taken up by people with a conspiracist bent. All right. Uh, stop arguing, please that, you know, it's not Agenda 21, it's Agenda 2030. All right. Agenda 21, the foundation. Agenda 2030, the bricks to build Agenda 21. 2030 Agenda is nothing more than a reboot of Agenda 21. The United Nations uses such updated um, updates of plans to keep their people excited and involved. The 2030 agenda simply goes into more detail as to how and what they intend to do. So, Agenda 21, the comprehensive blueprint for the reorganization of human society, and 2030 agenda gives more detail on how it is to be done, along with providing a more specific date for its full implementation, which is 2030. All right, my cats are going nuts. Uh, they, one in particular has been going nuts for about 48 hours. And yeah, do I think it might be the frequencies? Yes. All right. So these are very good articles. If you don't know anything about Agenda 21 or Agenda 2030, check it out. Um, <clears throat> UN Agenda 21 impacts private property rights and freedom. You, as an individual, can't manage your property. That's why we need government to manage it. Now, when you come across um, articles that, well, say that this is voluntary, you better check out what your town council has passed as rules and regulations, what your state legislature has passed, legislation. 
It's not voluntary. They have created laws, rules, and regulations that you will have to abide by if you're not already having to abide by it. So, Elimination of Private Land Ownership, United Nations Agenda 21, here at the local level, Baltimore's County Office of Planning defines sustainability uh, and Carroll County's sustainability plan, uh, Montgomery County has a sustainability plan. All you have to do is put in a search engine uh, your county, your town, the state, and put in sustainability plan. Anderson County, South Carolina, the comprehensive plan. Oh, 75 pages worth of a plan for one county. And then you can put in control F, which will uh, allow you to put in key words. And you hit enter. And voila, oh, sustainability of forest communities. And what else do we have? We've got, ah, as our population becomes more aware of sustainability and protecting our environment, it's all United Nations Agenda 21, 2030 driven. This is not voluntary at all. And you might want to check it out. How many renewable energy firms have come into your county, your town, your state? Renewable energy firms opens Anderson County facility. We are excited to bring sustainable renewable energy to South Carolina and continue our mission to provide a green process that eliminates waste and continues to help achieve the United Nations sustainability goals. Yes. Our federal agencies, our state agencies, our state government, our local government, our federal government is, they're all implementing the United Nations Agenda 21-2030 plan to reshape this country. Okay. Um, it's unfortunate that we cannot get through Two people, very unfortunate, because, yes, this could have been stopped, but for all of the people that just call us crazy nut jobs, that they're not doing this, you're just a conspiracy theorist, well, this is the buyouts only for areas that were flooded and not all of the areas, but the areas in 2018, the end of the year 2018, okay? You go back and you will see that towns have been bought out, private property has been bought out, and it's all about that green space, all about that green space because it reduces the jurisdiction's overall flood risk when man is actually bringing about the flooding. Okay, I will link below not to all of those uh, FEMA buyout articles. Th that was all from an, a video that I did last year. But I will link below to the patents and the methods of uh, weather modification as well as all of the articles that I've gone through. All right, guys, it's uh, it's hard to do this, you know, in two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes. But, yeah, I feel it's really important for everybody to see every single day all of these areas getting flooded out because it's coming to you. Whether it's going to be fire, whether it's going to be flood, whether it's going to be a tornado, it's coming. And millions and millions and millions of Americans have already experienced it. 
All right, all links are below. Ciao, guys.